If you have lived any amount of time, there have been moments where we sought identity and real purpose during our journey. Sometimes it's our failure to embrace the power to define that prohibits us from experiencing peace in the midst of chaos. Here is Eric Moore to tell us about seeking alignment with God. All right, uh, here with Brother Moore, Eric Moore. Uh, Excited to hear a little bit about his story. And uh, first, want to ask you, how do you, how, what about your experiences allow you to show up the way you do today? Well, (laughs) you just dive right in, Brother Sherman. (laughs) Uh, First of all, let me say it's an honor to be here. Um, This format, I think, is one um, that is very uh, informative to the church. Uh, It brings a lot of dimension and texture. Um, And these conversations are oftentimes conversations that one cannot have with one another through the halls of church. Um, You you go through the church um, process, the order of service and all of that. You hear the sermon. But I think there's a certain richness in having an opportunity to share one on one. So with that, thank you for 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 being here. Um, You know, I'm just a guy, uh, uh, Brother Sherman. I grew up uh, in uh, Oak Cliff. Uh, Highland Hills in particular, my grandparents were part of the 50s migration out of the country, out of East Texas to the major cities. And I'm a product of that migration. Um, went to Hillcrest High School, was fortunate enough to be an athlete there, uh, moved to Waco as a freshman in high school, which was a life changing experience going from the city to a smaller town, um, was able to do some really cool things in football there and be around some really good people. Um, as you look back over your life, you see God's hand oftentimes. And and so what I look back on in that experience was, um, you know, Waco was the Bible Belt. You know, we were right near Baylor University. Grant Taft was a big time coach there. And so I had a chance to be in that space and be around people of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, my coach, Johnny Tusa uh, at Waco High School, who's in the Hall of Fame, um, is the model of what a coach um, should be. Uh, he was a man of faith. It wasn't about winning games as much as it was cultivating character in young men. Um, so raised, you know, by my dad, my stepfather, who, who's my dad. And my mother had me at 15 years old. And um, so did a lot of really cool things and ultimately went on to Texas A&M, moved back to Dallas, was in business, failed a lot, had some great experiences, lived in Houston for a while, um, lived in Austin for a while, back and forth to Dallas and just honored to be back in Dallas and a member of Oak Gardens. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot that you just gave us in a, in a short period of time. Um, you know, people of faith having an impact in your life, it sounds like at a very early age, um, I'm sure left a great, a great mark on you and impression. Um, and even as you, I mean, you termed it as failed in business. I'm sure there were a lot of <laughs> life <laughs> lessons <laughs> yeah. that you picked up. So maybe speak to us about, you know, how that informs your spiritual walk today, having those people of faith to kind of model that out Mm -hmm. um, and then taking life lived experiences to, to get to this point. Well, I'll, 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 I'll take a, 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 a a roundabout road to your question. Um, You know, you talk about faith and, you know, when you're young, you don't know what that means, right? Um, You, you just live and you sense things. And uh, as I mentioned, my mother had me at 15 years old Um, and my grandfather, who was in my life, he raised eight kids after my grandfather passed away. And what I sensed in that environment was love. Hmm. Right. That there was a lot of pain in losing my grandmother that that orbited in the space and the memory of her still is with us all and the pain of losing her. Um, But I received love and I knew what love felt like. And so having experienced love at an early age, I, and and, and as I'm older and you think about it, that's how God speaks to us. Mm. You know, and when I, in service, I talk, when I, when I have the honor to host humbly to host, I talk about love a lot because that's God's language, right? We may not understand scriptures. We may not understand specific terminologies, but we feel love. Yeah, right. And, yeah. there, and there's an there, there, there's an there's a there's there's something that's evoked when you feel it. And so when you know, to your point, 
when you talk about a faith walk and, and things that I've experienced in my life, I've always sought that feeling, mm -hmm. right? And it's not only just seeking that feeling, you get to a point in your life to where you want to share that feeling as well. Mm -hmm. Something that's good to you, you want to share it with others. Now, it didn't happen overnight, right? I mean, I went through being a teenager. I went through being a college athlete. I went through pain, right? But even in the midst of that pain as a young person, there was love. And so that highlighted and crystallized the model for me that that remained in my subconscious and moved more to my conscience as I matured in life, hmm. right? You mean in the midst of the confusion of teenage years, in the midst of losing, as they say, and I'm putting up air quotes, in the midst of loss, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, that there's still a capacity to receive and be loved, mm. right? Yeah. And yeah. so my brain worked on that over the years, right? Yeah. It worked on it through business. It worked on it through my social life. It worked on it through my my faith life, right? And it's it, it's really that core model, right? It's not, it, it, it's, and, and you and I were talking earlier, sometimes we overcomplicate things. Absolutely. Right? God loved us, loves, loved us through his, he created us because he loves us yeah. in his image. Just start there. Start there. Right. You know, scriptures, I didn't go to theological seminaries or any of that stuff. I'm not a doctor this or a doctor that, but start there. God created us in his image. Yeah. So, so through all of that, I, I know that, um, you know, <laughs> The way that we show up, our 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 essence, our being, the energy that we, you know, bring to any conversation, anything that we put our hands to do here, in life, um, is extremely important. And I know it's an, important for you. You know, through all of that, what do you feel that you learn most about yourself? You know, through through that process, it, and perhaps you know. Um, it might be good to know at what point you feel like you found your authentic self, your voice and, and who you were. Oh, that's a that's a that's a really good question, uh, Brother Sherman. And, and, and thank you for asking that, because it's an evolving process. Right. Um, Bruce Lee is one of my heroes and he's like, be like water. Right. And water can be ice. It can be vapor. It can be a, a, a roaring river. Um, but it's always in motion and it's always in the process of becoming, right? And I, I, I will take that as a line from um, uh, our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, becoming, right? And it's a process. Um, but I think, uh, and I've orbited around it in various phases in my life. And again, I, there's been pain. Um, I've been a knucklehead. I've done a lot of things, but there was always something deep inside of me that I always had the courage to listen to. And so I, I kind of coined it. And, and the process that evolved in my life are, you know, three or four basic principles. Know thyself, right? Because you're in this thing with yourself. You need to know. You need to know. <laughs> I'm a nut, right? I'm a nut. I'm a crazy person. But if that's what you are, then that's what you are. Know that about yourself, right? Um, and then embrace your power to define. You don't let anyone external of self define self. Hmm. Don't give anyone that power. Yeah. Right. Don't ever give anyone that power over you. Right. Because they'll put you in a little bitty box and they'll manipulate you and they'll put you in places that are that aren't authentically you. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so that embrace your power to define. And once you've done that, love who you are. Scars, warts and all. I love me. And that may sound arrogant, but I love me through the lens of God creating me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I love I love being me because you know what there's only one me and that's kind of cool yeah right and that gives you the capacity to love the other singularities that gives me the capacity to love you brother sherman that gives me the capacity to love the members of our church right and then the lastly once you've done all of that seek your purpose and embrace that purpose right i see beauty at oak gardens every day that i'm here right yeah. i see people that have gone through things that would destroy others. 
but I see us go through life together. And so being a part of this church body, I see what is called amplification, hmm. right? I am a singularity, but within the context of a body, you have the ability to amplify the goodness and the essence of what I know and believe Oak Gardens is about. And that's a powerful thing to witness, but it's even more powerful when you stand up and say, and be accounted for and say, I want to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, you know, to, to the point you just left off at, you know, how much power could we as a body have if we were willing to love who we are naturally? I feel like society as a whole teaches us that there's something wrong with us. We've got issues. Our failures, our previous disappointments are who we are. Uh, and it doesn't allow us to step outside of our past defeat to really experience the power that we have, one, through Christ Jesus, um, but two, the power that we have in owning our own narrative, because all of that allows us to show up not only for ourselves and for our families and our children and those around us, but for that collective body, you know, for us to be able to be connected to each other in community and see what God is doing in our lives is powerful. But I feel like a lot of times we show up <laughs> a shell of ourselves mm -hmm. and we really don't experience the full essence of, of why God put us together in community. So there's a lot to that question and I'm uh, that comment question, and I may not get to all of it, but let me give you what I sense. Um, we are a peculiar people uh, as Christians, as people of color, as human beings, right? Um, and so we are. So the way that I've been able, th that, that's worked for me is that I process information primarily intellectually and creatively, right? And that gives me a pathway into understanding the context or lack thereof of God, mm. right? And so my Christian and faith walk is not separate from my intellectual walk. It's not separate from my creative walk. It's not separate from my social walk. Yeah. It's not separate from my cultural walk. It's a convergence. And in that convergence, I see connectivity. Yeah. Right. We were just I was just in Africa and Ghana, uh, in particular, the north. I was in Accra, but also the northern region with Malcolm and my, my son. And we're in a in a remote area and we were in a classroom talking to Muslim and all Muslim girls school. OK. You got brother Moore and young brother Malcolm <laughs> in Ghana talking to an all girls Muslim school an hour's flight north of Accra in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a blast. Yeah. But on that blackboard, it had matter, M-A-T-T-E-R. And it was a class on physics. Okay. And it had atoms and it had nucleus. It had all this stuff. Now there's goats. Yeah. Walking by, bah, bah, <laughs> for sound effects, because I know we're, we're audio. Um, there's birds, chicken, everything. But they're talking about how atoms connect with other atoms to form matter. Yeah. This is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Right. And so my little brain says in a church body, we're all atoms. Yes, sir. We're all supercharged atoms. Okay. So if I connect with a brother Sherman, and he may be better than me. He may be vibrating at a higher frequency than me. He may be farther down on his walk and closer to God than me. But if I connect with him out of love and authenticity, we might make each other better and stronger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and so that's me and you. And so what if me and you hook up with us and them? And us and them hook up with they and they. And overnight, this thing changes because of our knowledge of self, our power to define ourselves within the context of our God, and all of a sudden, the reality changes overnight. 
And in the old days, they would call, oh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> no, it's an intentional, it's an outcome of an intentional effort. Right. That is anchored and aligned with God. That's how you change it. Yeah. And so whatever they say about us, whatever they say about our history, whatever box they want to put us in, it doesn't matter. What matters is that I love you and you and I are connected to a movement that began since the beginning of time. Yeah. That's what matters. And we teach our children and we show our children and overnight, Overnight, yeah. And I, I think that I, that goes back to, you know, the point you made before, in that we have complicated something that was designed to be so simple. Um, there's power in community, and and we as people of color, um, because of various reasons, our communities are fragmented in a way that doesn't allow us to have healthy dialogue that says, let me connect with another, another atom over here. It may, it, it may be easier to remain in isolation than it is to really experience that power of connectivity. And, and, you know, one of the things that you mentioned just now is that alignment with God. And I don't know that we ever completely get in true alignment with God when we haven't identified people and persons who we can do life with. And I say that because, you know, the thing that you mentioned before of love, right? It's we have to know love to be able to receive it. But also a part of our, our Christian responsibility is to give it, is to be love for someone else and be a conduit for all that God has, has blessed us with. And, and you know, all of that echoes in my mind and, and as being an aspiring intellectual, right? I'm not at, I'm not at your level yet. <laughs> uh, that's uh-huh. something that's going to be processing through my head, right? Because you get this power of just, con- or you get the visual of just kinetic energy and power that comes with these and they and them showing up together with commonality and a common purpose and goal. Mm-hmm. And then you you juxtapose that with miracles. Mm -hmm. What type of miracles could we experience and witness if we would ever just link up? The transformation of the world and the reality that we share. Absolutely. The world is waiting on us. The world knows that it's suffering and dying on the vine and it's waiting on us. Yeah. Right. You know, President Obama said we are the change that we've been waiting for. Right. Think about that. Think about that. I mean, we are as Christians. We are. Yeah. Right. And I don't mean Christians from the standpoint of everybody's going to hell if right, you don't subscribe right. to my denomination. <laughs> right. Man, that, man, come on, man. Really? Our God is that small? No. Yeah. People that were created in the image of God um, acting right. Right. Yeah. And it takes courage. And you and I were talking earlier, many of the things that are liberating are counterintuitive. Mm. Wait a minute. You're going to die on a cross? That hurt. Yeah, That's painful. But that's the liberation Mm. and the pathway? Really? Think about that. Yeah. Right? Right? You know, I was, and you, you know, in the church note, um, you know, I was a football player, right? And um, it was all about aggression. It was all about raw, right? You know, I mean, I was knocking people out. But in the process of knocking people out, I was knocking myself out, right? <laughs> but that's what the empire, that's what the empire, that was the high, that was one of the highest manifestations of success in the empire. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. That's that doesn't make sense. Now I did it. I don't knock anybody else from doing it. That's right. fine because I was born a gladiator. That's what I am, right? But the gladiator loves and feels and thinks as well. And the right. gladiator looks, seeks spiritual food. But I had to go through that to have a better understanding of thyself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thyself. And in the midst of, 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 of that space, I learned things about myself. And what I learned was courage. What I learned was intentionality. Mm. What I learned was hard work, 
What I learned was if you put the work in, right, uh, what was right thought, right actions, right outcomes. Yeah. It's guaranteed. It's mathematical. Yeah. One yeah. plus one will always equal two. So if I put in the right work, if I, if I have the right expectations, if I or seek the right, put in the right amount of work, the outcomes are guaranteed. But we have to believe that. And yeah. everything in our life tells us that that's not we don't have the capacity to do that. So if, if, if the world is telling me, then I'm going to question it. Mm-hmm. If everybody else is doing it, then I'm going to question it. Right. I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to give it some critical thinking. Now, I may come to the same conclusion as everybody else, but I'm just not going to blindly follow. Right. Okay. And so you talked about oak gardens and the things that we do here. Come visit, dissect, deconstruct what we're doing. And as, as our pastor said, if it's not for you, go to somewhere else to where you can fit in. Right. But we're going to be authentically us. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what the church, uh, our what our movement, what our existence has done for me, I'm goofy, man. I'm really goofy. And people laugh at me and they laugh with me. But they, the church allows me to be authentically me. Yeah. And I'm forever grateful for that. Sometimes the stuff I say when I have the honor to host, it falls flat, live, in front of everybody. And I'm terrified, right? But this body loves each and every one of us for who we are. Right. Right. Right? When when did that when did that click for you? When did when When were you comfortable with presenting who you are openly? So uh, one of the terms that pastor used to use um, a long time ago, I hadn't heard him say it in a few years, but it's that level to the ground, Hmm. right? Um, And we've all been leveled to the ground before, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe not physically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, And I went through a divorce, man. And uh, it literally almost killed me. I'd gone through three major surgeries that were extremely painful um, because I was carrying around so much stress, Mm. trying to do it on my own arrogant self, right? God, I can fix this. I don't need you. I can do this, right? Um, But I'd gotten myself in a situation that I created for my own self, Mm. right? And I lost everything, right? And I didn't grow up with a lot. I mean, I would come home some days and you know, you, you hoping the lights come on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I literally slept on the floor until I was 15. I'm like, dad, y'all finally decided to get some furniture when I'm about to graduate. (laughs) I mean, 16, 17. Right. So, I mean, it was that, so I would go out, but I was embarrassed about the poverty that I had as a young child. Mm -hmm. And my dad, he had, you know, got dropped out of school and went back to college and all of that. And once he got that degree, his life transformed, Mm -hmm. our life transformed. But in that process, man, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough, man. Yeah. It was tough wearing the same clothes, wear a set of clothes on Monday, wash them, then you mix it up for thir- for Wednesday, but it's the same pair of clothes. Right. <laughs> and then right. Friday, you know, in our neighborhood, that's that's hard. Um, but um, so I went through that divorce and lost everything, right? Because I put stake in things, hmm. right? Hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I had the house, the car, the right position in a, in a company, in an mm-hmm. organization, you know, at the time had the wife that looked good on paper. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and kids and, and I was dying on the, vi- on the vine. I went to therapy because I was out of here, man. Yeah. Sure. I was out of here dying on the vine as my therapist said. And, uh, and my aunt, uh, who I love dearly. She said, Eric, I don't know where you are in your life, but she knew I was in pain because I'd moved from Austin and had my two children Mm -hmm. on my own. And she said, there's a place. There's a a group of believers um, and they're good people. And I went to when we were in the hotel, the Hilton Hotel, and I sat in the back and uh, Brother Miles and same brothers, the, 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 <laughs> all y'all deacons. Or you were you're a newer deacon, but and they were there, and and they say, "Hey, brother," and just just kind of hugged me. They didn't know who I was. Yeah, I'm in pain. Could barely stand up, 
And uh, they say, hey, brother, you know, welcome. And I'm like, man, they don't know me from nobody. <laughs> right? You know, glad you're here. Right? And uh, and uh, and in a long time, and I hadn't felt that in a long time. Hmm. And that was it. And so I, and I came back the next Sunday and I came back the next and the next and the next. And I said, you know what? I got nothing to lose. Right. Yeah. Cause I had stepped away from the church, church of Christ. Cause I thought I was going to hell for breathing. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. okay. and I was like, you know, you're going to hell. I was like, well, wait a minute, man. I, well, why am I even trying? Yeah. And, and, and that just clicked in my head and said, you got nothing to lose. And God kept showing up through people. Yeah. It wasn't something from the cloud. It was people. Right. It was a brother being kind to me. It was me looking across at a sister. It was our pastor saying, I'm trying to figure this out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, like, wait a minute, the pastor, he he <laughs> he ain't got it figured out. And he and I see him working and 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 toying with it and wrestling with it. I said, man, well, if I got to go out, I'm going to go out trying. Right. right. And God healed me and he restored me. And it, and it's been, it's, and I'm no, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, man. I'm, I sin this morning, probably going to sin tonight, but you know what? I'm in a, I'm, I'm vibrating in a space now that feels natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, 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 it feels natural. It feels good. It feels right. Right? And God whispers every day. Yeah. See? Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Trust it. I'm here. I love you. I've always been there. Keep going. Keep going. It gets better. There's so much beauty in that. Um, and, and, you know, I think that we, in our context growing up, receive spirituality as some sign that comes from the heavens or from the clouds. Yes. And we so often overlook that it's us individually showing up in other people's lives, being present, being where our feet are to to meet people's needs that we may not even know are present and manifest themselves. Um, but so often we just ignore that responsibility, right? We just, we just miss it. And so I'm thankful that you got it <laughs> way back then at the, at the hotel and that you're here present today. It's, it's, it's a blessing. Um, it's a journey. I mean, I still struggle. I mean, give me, don't get me wrong. I struggle, but I have joy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I'm grateful for that. I have joy, man. And God has always been there. And you know, I it, it's weird. I, I it, because, but we are we are. This is a special time. Okay, mm -hmm. we are the pages. Hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> Think about that. Think about how awesome that is. Right. We are the pages. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, just let that sink in. We are the pages. What more motivation do we need? Mm. And I don't care if you've been harmed. I, man, we all been harmed. Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of it. Right? Yeah. But once you get past the harm and the hurt, there, it, it's kind of like that, that scene in The Matrix where Neo... He goes, but but he, he 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 he's rising up like a phoenix, and then all of a sudden, all of the earth is all in destruction. Then he goes up beyond the clouds, and he just hovers for a while. And there's this there's this singularity, right? Yeah, right. And 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 and, and I so so there's this singularity that I think is a result of what I shared earlier. Know thyself, embrace the power to define, love who you are, seek your purpose. And you get to a point where there's this beautiful singularity and that singularity is peace mm. in the midst of chaos. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't happen overnight. Right. Right. It happens incrementally over time. 
And so, uh, Brother Moore, what would you tell the younger version of yourself? Don't ever cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Better have a nice fro. Yeah. Um, trust. Trust it. Hmm. Trust it. Don't doubt. Trust it. Yeah. And uh, he's got you. Because many of my conversations as a young person were with myself. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Many of my conversations were with myself and me having conversations with myself in my quiet places. Many of my conversations as a football player, at Texas A&M on that field in front of 100,000 people were with myself. Yeah. And yeah. you know what I'm talking about? You're a ball player. Yeah. I was like, man, all these people here to see all these little black boys run around this field. This is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> They seem to be taking this really serious. <laughs> no, but trust it. I'm I'm serious and I'm joking, but uh, trust it. Trust yeah. it. Yes, sir. That little girl, that little boy and all of us, trust them. Yeah. What would, what would, uh, you mentioned that little boy and little girl inside. Um, what would you, what would be your prayer for the next generation? That they love who they are. Look in the mirror, all of these little babies. And I say this to the little kid. That's why I love our youth church, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I love babies, man. I really do, man, because yeah. they're just, oh, man, they're just, but um, you're beautiful and love yourself, yeah, right? And always remember when God created man and woman, the image is you. Hmm. Look in the mirror. And start from there and move forward. Yeah. So all these young people start there. Yeah. Yeah. And go forward. Yeah. Yes, sir. Brother Moore, I appreciate the time. Uh, yes. and and I can't wait for everyone to hear this and and get some insight into how you show up and why you show up the way you do, but also to receive the words of affirmation for people who need it to hear it. Yes. I know I need to hear it this morning as well. Thank you. And um, and we'll definitely I'll, I'll yield the floor to you if there's any last thing you want to say, and then um, I'll close us out in prayer. No, I just simply want to say that it's an honor to share this journey with you and and our church family. It is it is it is truly an honor, and my strength comes from knowing that I'm not in this alone, and we're doing life together. Yeah. And uh, so, just thank you for your your gifts, and thank this church um, for the collective gifts, and it's an honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Lord, we love you. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to hear about the experiences you gave Brother Moore, his lived experiences, uh, the testimonies that he shared, uh, and his challenge for all of us to know ourselves, to love ourselves, and to seek alignment with you and the beautiful picture in which he painted of elements coming together. And we pray that through this conversation, you will open our eyes and ears to see and hear opportunities for us to do life together, for us to learn from one another, yes. for us to grow and develop the gifts and talents that you've given us, and for us to develop a deeper sense of love that is reflective of the image that you've given each and every one of us. And so, Lord, as Brother Moore has requested, just prayer for the next generation, that they will see themselves and love themselves, that they will yes. uh, always remember that they are made in the image of you and that we as adults present in their lives can be conduits of that message um, being echoed in their minds that we can support uh, the beauty that is them um, yes. and, and that we can support the growth and maturation in their lives that they can show up the healthiest version of themselves, but also that we as a body of believers seeking you can be the hands and feet of Jesus in a very practical sense. And so Lord, we're praying for us as a body of believers, asking you to continue to bless the Moore family and for each of us listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank yeah. you, brother.